Hello and welcome to the first video in this series making Simple Flappy Robin for the iPhone and iPad, iPad using uh, Cocos 2D. So on my channel you may have seen that I've already done a playlist or I'm still in the process of doing a playlist making Simple Flappy Robin for Android and to do that I used um, the Cocos 2D framework and for Android I used the X variant, Cocos 2DX, which um, uses the language C++ and which is uh, cross-platform across almost every platform. Cocos 2D for iPhone is these days also relatively cross-platform, um, but is more, still more, well, I get the feeling, iPhone-specific. And I thought it might be good, actually, to do the same series as I did for the Android version using Cocos 2D X, to actually do it with an iPhone and iPad-specific version using the Cocos 2D iPhone framework. So before we get started, just a quick explanation of what the Cocos 2D framework is in case you're not familiar, and I'll do this as quickly as possible. All it is, well not all it is, it's a fantastic framework that provides you with some really, really simple APIs to make a game. And when I say simple, I mean really simple. So all of the hard work drawing with OpenGL is already um, taken care of to put a sprite on the screen it's a couple of lines of code to move it to make it spin to make it disappear is one line of code to do things like scheduling function calls is a line of code um, to do things like switching between different screens is also a line of code so there's a load of stuff that you can do um, in, with the Cocos 2D framework which really really simplifies um, some of the stuff that ends up being quite big when you're writing things um, at very low level when you're writing games and Cocos 2D takes care of nearly everything you can think of developing a game and it makes writing and developing a game extremely easy and in fact this simple Flappy Robin app that I wrote and I'll just start it now the C++ version so you can have a look what we're aiming for uh, I'll just press command and run and run the application this application here, which is done deliberately very simple, the graphics aren't a masterpiece by any means, there's some very annoying background music as you can probably hear now, um, and it's a copy, copy of the Flappy Bird game, uh, written as I said using Cocos Studio Framework, um, with some labels and things, a settings menu. Um, but the main point was just to show the techniques used. But the framework is, is so easy that um, I had the idea of doing a series originally with the C++ version one morning and the first thing I needed to do obviously was write the game to sort of 80% complete to make sure I knew what I was doing with the series and I think I had it written in about an hour so nothing more because the framework uh, provided by Cocos 2D or Cocos 2DX it makes it so simple to do things like that. So enough uh, rabbiting on, what do we need then to write this application on a Mac? Well you need Xcode installed obviously, Xcode is the IDE that you use generally on the Mac, it's not the only one but it's the main one that's used for writing applications, especially for the iPhone and the iPad if you want to release them on there. So you'll need to have Xcode installed. If you haven't then I think these days it's available in the App Store, otherwise you can probably Google it and find out um, how you download it, but you won't get very far if you haven't got Xcode installed. The next thing we need to do is install the templates to be able to make projects using uh, Cocos 2D. Now if I go to File, New and Project inside Xcode, on the left hand side here you can see there's a menu and these are the templates that are used to make your project and you're probably familiar already with some of these templates. So we here have a master detail or single view app when you're using the UI kit frameworks and things and you see here I've already got two sets of templates installed. One is the version 2 ver uh, uh, version of Cocos 2D which I haven't used for quite a while because I've been using recently Cocos 2D X um, and I've just installed today actually in preparation for this video the version 3 and I'll show you now how you go about installing that so you can also then create your project. You need to go to cocosd2d-iphone.org and what used to sometimes be a process that didn't always work, they've now really massively simplified with version 3. In fact, I've had a look at the um, code produced and the stuff we need to write for the project, and they've simplified a lot of things, um, all positive with the version 3. It's actually really, really good. But on the main homepage here, if you just go down, there's a Getting Started page, a link provided here. And inside that link, 
there is a download Cocos 2D and recommended, they're not kidding, download the installer and then if you run this installer it will then install everything you need for Cocos 2D and in fact I just have a directory here, yep, I thought I did, where it shows that I downloaded the installer I just double clicked on that and I had a message popping up a little while later telling me everything's installed, you're good to go so back into Xcode, I'm just going to close the project that I have open here for the Android version and just go File, New and Project and assuming everything installed OK, you should now have this template on the left hand side, version 3 of Cocos 2D select the iOS version and for product name I'm going to use a Simple Flappy Robin, you can use whatever you like I guess um, it doesn't really matter now what name you give it and I'm going to keep the company identifier Simple Flappy Robin. Um, I've already created something and uploaded it to iTunes now so that I've registered this um, bundle identifier and everything. And device family, you want to be universal here. I'll click Next. And then simply select where you want to actually uh, create the project in terms of the folder. And what you should have then is a load of files or R, a load of files on the left hand side so resources and libraries and classes which we'll go into in a minute and in the middle here you've got the main sort of settings for the projects the build number the deployment target which I think later on we'll actually have to change because I'm pretty sure you need a deploy deployment target now of iOS 7 otherwise they don't accept apps so I'll have to check that and the device orientation here landscape left and right and you'll see that the asset um, catalogs are already being used now. It's introduced, I think, in Xcode 5 to try and organize all of your icons and launch images and everything better. They're already in and everything's done. And the relevant frameworks and everything are also included. So everything has been already, by the template from Cocos 2D iPhone, set up for you. So you're actually ready with a complete application here, ready to run. And in fact, if I select iPhone Retina 3.5 inch and iOS 7, I'm just going to click this play button here to actually run the application on the iOS sim simulator. It'll just build. We have our splash screen, so our launch image here. And then we've got our main uh, scene here, or screen here. I'll talk about scenes in a minute. And we can press start, and then we get a spinning app here. And when also when I touch the app, you can see down in the console here that it's um, detecting where we're touching and we're trying to move the sprite. Ah, we do it like this, I hadn't actually known. So wherever we click, moves the sprite then in that direction. And we click menu to go back to the menu transitioning with a slide there. So you've actually quite, what, quite a cool little app already, particularly as just a demonstration completely created by the framework for us. So just press stop and we'll have a little look at the most important folder for us which is this classes folder here. Resources and things we'll get into later on. But if we look in the classes folder we can have a look at what we've got. And we'll start with the app delegate and the app delegate has one crucial function inside it and that is called this did finish launching with options. So when exactly that is completed then all of the stuff inside here then runs. Now with Cocos version 2D version 2 and previous, this, there was quite a, lot of, quite a lot of code in here. Um, they've really cleaned this up actually. Um, and now you can set uh, with some options. You can see an array being supplied here. Uh, it's telling us it wants to show the debug stats, which were those numbers on the bottom left hand side. I'll talk about in a later video that you saw when we're just running the application. And you can set various other things you can read yourself in here as well. We're going to leave this for now as it is. And the way things run is with this start scene that you see down here. And what it's running, it is running the scene function static of the intro scene class. So this is a static function of this class. So let's go into intro scene and have a look at what that is. So inside intro scene, we can see that it's subclasses or inherits from CC scene. And it has two functions. One is initialization function and one is a static scene function and the static scene function returns a pointer to an intro scene. So if we go into intro scene itself and have a look, we can see here that the static function is essentially allocating an instance of intro scene and calling the initialization on it and then returning a pointer to this. All very good, very simple. So in app delegate, when we call this, it's simply starting 
a scene that's then created by this static function here. So the important part then is inside this function here, which is the initialization. And we'll cover all what these codes do, obviously, in the, the later um, videos. But So we set the background color here using red, green, and alpha. This here CC label is making a label with the string hello world with a font and specifying the font, then setting its position, its color, and then, um, the, sorry, setting its position type, the color, and then whereabouts it wants to be positioned, and then adding this uh, label to the scene. Now in old versions of Cocos 2D, you had layers which were on top of scenes. Well, they've changed that now, and you simply add all of these um, items now onto the scene itself. And then we have the Hello World button that we saw where we click the Start. Again, we create something of a button class here. It's position set. And then there's a target for when it's clicked, which is this on spinning clicked. And then it's added to the layer, which means it'll then be visible. So already, without knowing anything about the framework, you can probably read through that and understand pretty much what's going on and partly helped by the syntax of Objective-C there. If we go down to the on spinning clicked, which is the function that's called when the Hello World button is clicked, we see that we use uh, a class here called the CC Director, which is a singleton, one of them existing, called Shared Direct, which, well, which is accessed using this uh, call to Shared Director. And we call something called Replace Scene. And all that does is replace the current scene with, in this case, um, ex the scene returned by a call to our static scene function from the hello world scene. So in exactly the same way that we called the scene in our intro scene here, what we've done with the hello world scene. And here it's making the transition push with direction and a duration of one second. So it simply slides over. Again, we'll look at the transition effects and stuff during the creation of the app. So if we go into hello world scene dot M then, sorry, dot H, we have the initialization and the scene exactly the same as the intro scene. And if we have a look at um, the Hello World scene, we have our sprite here, which is a private um, variable here, class variable of, of object type CC sprite. Here's the allocation returning a pointer to our scene. And the interesting part is here. So here we've said we want to be able to receive touches. Again, we've set the color of the background here. And now our sprite is initialized using the Cocos2D icon. It's positioned then in the middle of the screen. And here we add the sprite so we can see it onto our scene. And now we've got an action here, which is action rotate by. And later on in the um, application development, we'll go into actions and how we do them. But this is a rotation action, which says uh, rotate it by 360 degrees over a duration of one and a half seconds. And then run this action, action spin, so rotate, repeating forever. So always, so basically just keep spinning all of the time. So when the action's finished, run it again. Then we have our back button, which is much like our start button, which has a selector saying on back clicked. And when that's clicked, then, um, where is it? I'll just find, here it is, on back clicked. Then we call our replace scene with transition and the transition direction, the duration, like we saw. So you can imagine we then go back to our intro scene because we're calling intro scene scene here. And last but not least here is the touch began. So when a finger goes down or a mouse is clicked in the case of the simulator on the screen, this function is called. And we can get our location as a point on the screen um, of where the touch actually happened. And then here we're making an action to tell the sprite with a duration of a second to move to this new location that we've touched and then running that action on the sprite. And what that should tell you here is you can actually have simultaneous actions running on an object at the same time. So that's a little bit of a long video for a start, but it's just a quick explanation of how things are set up. We're not going to change anything in the code for this video. We'll start that in the next video, but I hope that makes some sense as to how the framework works. You have your application, which is started inside your app delegate, and your whole application, each screen is based on this CC scene class, and you add your sprites and images and all sorts of things onto then your CC scene class. 
Music and things like that are handled differently, but very, very easily under this framework, and we'll cover those later on in the series. But for now, that's uh, it for this video. I hope it's made some kind of sense, and in the next video, we'll start programming the app proper. So thanks very much for listening, and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.